Hello, hello, welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. Today we're joined by Brian. He is the owner and pit master at Pit Faced Barbecue here in the DFW area. And today we're going to be trying meats and whiskey and enjoying the heck out of it. Because there's nothing better than meat and whiskey. <laughs> no, there is not. Looking forward to appreciate you guys having me aboard. Brian, right, tell us what we got, man. Yeah, so uh, over here, uh, close to Will, you got um, our armadillo eggs. So uh, these are armadillo eggs. Um, a lot goes into these. These have a little bit of whiskey influence, and I'll get to that in a second. But what an armadillo egg is, is we take a whole jalapeno, we stuff it with cream cheese, a little bit of chopped brisket, and then it gets wrapped in ground meat. And this time we're using venison with some bacon uh, mixed into it. And then that egg gets a little bacon weave over it because you can never have too, too much bacon, bacon, right? Interesting. Um, the whiskey influence on this is um, took a bottled and bond bourbon and mixed it in with the ground meat. Um, so add a little bit of uh, breadcrumbs to help kind of keep it nice and tight. Uh, but you're going to pick up a little bit of that bourbon influence in the, in the meat here. But everyone wants to see the money shot, right? It's, it's what it looks like on the inside. So you see all these layers going together. Get so what bourbon got used in there? This actually has uh, George Dickel bottled and bond. Uh -huh. awesome. nice. And now we get into this... Uh, Jalapeno, you can see some of that cream cheese. So here's what we're looking at with our uh, armadillo egg. Huge crowd favorite. Got a wonderful presentation on the cutting board and they taste awesome. That looks amazing. So you guys think you get the plates out, have a little taste? All right, so what is the first thing we're gonna try here? We've got the Old Forester 100 proof. Signature. Signature. We've got in our glass So we now. have in our glass right now. So how, how did you get into uh, barbecuing? There's a long line of uh, grill masters in my family. So this is like the steaks and the burgers and mm -hmm. the real quick cooks. And I got into it, you know, when I was younger. Did that for a number of years. And then one time I was like, I wanna try this low and slow thing. The, thing where I get to hang out on the back patio, drink some good whiskey, spend 10, 12 hours making some masterpiece, and I was about 2012. Five seconds eating it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the real thing of it is, I eat like 1% of what I cook. Mm. Yeah, I cook for other people, it's big cuts of meat, but yeah. just the joy of watching other people enjoy your food, yeah. right? So it, it's like whiskey, it's, it's the joy of sharing exactly. the meat. Exactly. This is really good. <laughs> it's so good. Mm. Oh, and then with the bourbon too. Oh my goodness. What a fantastic combination. Mm. Yeah, that bourbon, you know, it's got that sweetness that comes back out and it makes it really sweet on the bourbon. It does. Compared to the meat. Mm. You know, it's really, it makes it, the bourbon oh, yeah. becomes really desserty. Mm -hmm. mm, that's really tasty. That's good. a good choice to, make, to match up with. Yeah, it really is. It's a good contrast between, uh, you get a little bit of heat from the jalapeno, obviously. Mm -hmm. Not too much. No, not too much, but, but just enough to make you appreciate expected. the sweetness of the bourbon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Y'all are too formal with your forks over there, man. <laughs> I'm all about the fingers. Hard that fingers. Hey, that all works. I'll start. You're right. Those are bother me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good match. Mm hmm. That was a good choice. I really want to try this with a rye. I'm glad that rye brought in. Yeah. That was a good one. It was a good one. <laughs> I'm going to sail this with some mictors. Uh, something about. Barbecue and pickle that um, I've always, uh, you know. It's oh, yeah. interesting. Sure. It's always been a staple, so why not add some, a little bit of dill note to this. I love it. I got the end piece here. That's where all the bacon mm. comes in my head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I was not thinking. Pickle. <laughs> That yeah. really accentuates the pickle big time. It does, doesn't it? Like, holy crap. Okay, because you and I like rods oh, a lot. Oh, yeah. But I mean, usually you get more yeah. anise. This is the dill. This is super like, dill. Super dill. Yeah, and I'm style. wondering if it's the spicy with the jalapeno, or maybe it's that green know. cheese, the fatty, uh, that's bringing out that dill. But man, that dill is really, it's way really overpowering, more overpowering than normal. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, now I got fear of missing out. We gotta get some of this. Yeah, yeah for sure. Mmm. Mmm, what else? Should we get a dump? 
I was thinking I'm gonna probably just use this for my dump. This is dump, yeah. And just yeah, so uh, those, we grab pickles, we'll be we'll yeah, at the end. We can, we can talk about what the hell that smells like. Pickle. <laughs> that might be pretty fun at the end. All right, let's throw the striker. Yep. I think that's a good one to go to. Now. I'm thinking this might taste well with the uh, Andalusia striker. It's a smoked single malt here in Texas. Ooh, that's gonna be nice. Yeah, it's really nice because. It's made with oak, mesquite, and apple woods. Mm -hmm. So three different kinds of meat uh, tree that smoked over. So this should be quite interesting to see how this tastes with the meat. We were talking low and slow earlier. Uh, do you have a particular wood that you find to be your favorite, or do you experiment and play with all of them? Experiment and play with all of them, but I think it's, uh, you know, like whiskey, everyone's got their go-to, you know, the thing that they are most comfortable with. And for me, it's pecan wood. Um, uh -huh. It's a real light smoke, so you can get away with using it on everything from fish to poultry. And uh, if you load it up a little bit, maybe you throw in a couple chunks of hickory or something, then a real uh, robust cut like brisket or something works well. But I cook with all sorts of stuff. Um, for today, that's kind of interesting, Ooh. used uh, mesquite and oak. And the oak actually came from an expired bourbon barrel. Okay. Oh, perfect. So we tried to weave whiskey into this whole barbecue presentation today. So this, this is a really good partnership, uh, this video, I think. Yeah, I mean, ooh, wow, that really brings out the smoke. Oh, yeah. In a good way. Like, yeah, this yeah, is like it's... actually the smoke coals that you're, I'm sure, using this morning over the different woods. I mean, I can really taste the smoke in this whiskey on the Andalusia Striker. Yeah, that's a good mix as well. Mmm. All three of them so far. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh. All completely different. I mean, all the different types of whiskeys, but... Uh, everyone seems to accentuate a different note from the barbecue to the whiskey. So this is yes. a really kind of a cool experiment we're doing here. I'm really yeah. enjoying this. I'm mm. really enjoying the food. This is yeah. Right. <laughs> I appreciate that. <it. laughs> so there's plenty more where this came from. Oh. So let's uh, let's try this with some uh, some other yummies. Yeah, we'll try some Scots, yeah. American single malt, Japanese. Uh, we'll do some Indian. Indian you know, back there. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna try some different things. See how this stuff. is with. Who wants around one? the world? I'm real interested to try it with that uh, Glimmer Angie there. Yeah, okay. sherry, sherry, the sherry cask. cask. Yeah, really so This is the 12 year Glimmer in the sherry cask. Uh, I think it's going to add a lot of sweetness to it. We're about to find out. So, this should be a really nice uh, comparison with this for sure. And this is the right uh, cut to try with because when we get to the pork belly, that's a little bit sweeter anyway. Uh -huh. And I don't know if a, that sherry finish plus the sweet pork belly is. The right combination. Yeah, we'll I'm, find out. I'm looking forward to trying this Westland. We got that. I got the sharing one on the Westland. Yeah, it should be interesting. I think that's gonna be an interesting combo. I forgot how good this smells. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is supposed to be a good intro to Scotch in general. So this would be interesting to try with, with barbecue. You yeah, know, with Glen Randy sucker too. So yeah, I like some Glen Randy. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. That nose is just delightful. Oh yeah, it's so sweet. Mm. Great wish to begin with, so see how it is with some meat. Oh, it's so good. Still got that fruity sweetness and whatnot. It's like a meaty fruit. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's tasty. It's this one's almost tasty. disappearing though. Hit him. Yeah, it's not it's not jumping out like some of the others have. Well, I think yeah. the proof on this one is yeah, the proof's only eighty six. That that could be part of the reason, the proof being lower. Because it just kind of buries. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really accentuate it. Mm -mm. It's good. Yeah, the sweetness is hanging around. Yeah, it is the for whole me too. whiskey ex whiskey experience is disappearing. You're right. Mm -hmm. At least some of the sweetness hangs around. Yeah, the sweetness bit. lingers for me too. Yeah. It's the sweetness, but not the. Uh, it doesn't add to the barbecue. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't take away from it either, though. No, no, it doesn't take away from it. It's just not an amazing pair, unfortunately. You're enjoying two separate things when right. you get this way. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. We're not no serious. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Give me the right thing. Oh. Yes, I mean. But everybody that watches this one knows I'm anal, so it's nothing new. It's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 
yeah, the proof smells. You can you can smell it. It jumps out of the glass quite a bit more on the Westland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we got 100. The sherry, well, I think it's only a couple years old when they used the sherry before I remember. Oh, it smells good. Yeah, that proof definitely amps up. Mm -hmm. So this is 92, so this amps up a little bit on the proof. Versus, what'd you say, 86 on the Glen Range? 86, yeah. Mm. Oh, that, yeah. Did it amps up the spicy a little bit? A little bit. Yeah. The black pepper ding. Mm. Oh yeah. With that sweetness is sweetness nice and lingering. Yeah. It's also got some of the, uh, the oaky tannins and cinnamons mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. hot now. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting a new experience with yeah the yeah. That's now we're getting what it's supposed to do. And we've got American barbecue. It took an American single malt to yeah exactly yeah, yeah, exactly clearly yeah we're this in the right direction. I think this is my favorite one so far. You want to hear something surprising so far? The, the rye. Really? Mm. That is surprising. This is a, a very close second. I'm looking forward to getting into that hard bag here in a moment, but. I'm gonna skip the bag. That's gonna be interesting. I still keeps a lot of the uh, sweetness too, but yeah, it really jumps out those peppers mm -hmm. big time with it. Mm -hmm. mm. That's nice. It is. I really enjoy that. Mm. I have a feeling this one's gonna disappear behind mm -hmm. the smoke in the Probably, house. but but it's worth the experiment for sure. And I really think it's gonna go well with that next thing that we have looking at us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should probably get the amber root first before we do that core vacuum. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. This is 12 year Japanese. Unfortunately, this is a really, it's also 86 proof. Um, this is also a very nice whiskey. The problem, of course, is Yamazaki 12, also very hard to get. Used to be easy, easy to get now, but you can pretty much forget it. He was saying it before, okay. Yeah, because that hard bag's peed and that hard not. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I love Japanese whiskey. I think this is a great... Ooh, well, you know what? We cannot hear this. Is this so... Low? It's my whole... This is really buttery, though. It is. So buttery on it. It's actually so may work rich. out. Let's see. It's really rich. It's much mm. richer than I remember mm -hmm. Yamazaki being. Mm. Oh, that gives an interesting flavor. It's like all citrusy. Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, we're, yeah. We oh, got some other. Yeah. yeah, the citrus this, really pops. It really does for me, too. Like mm -hmm. fruitiness, but more on the citrus side of the fruit. Yeah, more your lemons and limes. A little bit of orange. Orange? Yeah. Orange. Uh, right when you said that, that's what I was picking up on yeah. the nose, especially. So this actually stands up to the barbecue, whereas the, the La Santa did not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is good. Mm. This is a completely different experience, for sure. Yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised how this turned out. Me too. Wow. 86 proof? That's tasty. Yeah, I mean, it jumps out of the glass more than it really does. I was expecting it to. Mm -hmm. I was expecting mm -hmm. it to be just. It's not a special bottle that you have, is it? No, it's just a regular 12. Push it's an older 12, and I think they've changed the box since that one, but I mean, same 12. I assume same juice. I got it mm, two, three years ago. I don't know. Japanese weird like that. Got a point. Well, the Yamasaki is actually made by Yamasaki. I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about Yamasaki being no. somebody else's stuff. <laughs> this is real Japanese yeah. whiskey. It's That's not. Just hey, it's scotch, and we stuck it in a bottle. So now it's Japanese. We brought it to Japan. Totally Japanese whiskey. You know, whatever. Now, it's a real thing. crazy cream. It's amazing. It's just yeah. it's buttery, creamy. Mm -hmm. Citrusy. It's like the cream cheese portion of the armadillo. Yeah, maybe that's this why. This is representing. Maybe yeah, that's yeah. Why it goes so well. It pairs really well. I really like it. I'm surprised. We're that. moving on to a cask strength version of the Amroot mm -hmm. uh, single malt. Yeah. Cask strength. This one is 61.8%. <laughs> so, real cask strength. 
And as it says, it's a two-year-old whiskey, so this should be really interesting to see what this ends up doing with the barbecue. Oh, tasting really good on its own. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> for sure. Tasting really good on its own. This is a really, really good pour. Your meat is glorious, sir. Ah, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll never get tired of hearing that. Wow. That really makes the bacon pop. Mmm. I guess a lot of nice spice. It's really spicy, but in a, not hot isn't like alcohol burn, just really peppery. Hot peppers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With jalapeno, I mean, really accentuates the peppers. That's With damn good. Bacon. Oh, uh, bacon and pepper, that just makes mm -hmm. it pop. This is what I was expecting the Ardbeg to do. Um, to me, all of the meaty aspects of mm. of it came like just shooting out mm. of the glass, and mm. I wasn't expecting that on an amber none heated, but mm. that's what I'm picking. I'm, uh, you're right on the bacon, yeah, good. everything being essentially yeah. from the meat. Um, the meat. It almost mm. adds a smoky sensation, gaminess. Yeah. Yeah, for an unheated whiskey too. Yeah, it's got a lot of smokiness. Smokiness. Yeah, that's really nice. I really like that with it. Mm -hmm. That makes it real. What is it called? Uh, dry aging. Yeah. Almost it, it tastes just yeah. just more dense and compacted. Right. And that to me is what mm -hmm. it just did. You know, uh, I not too long ago was with a few buddies and we had an amber root and a cavalon, which I think those profiles mm -hmm. tend to be fairly similar. Pretty young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. They have like a little bit of that Maybe. funk on it, and the first thing I thought of was dry aged beef, just like mm -hmm. you said. Okay. It reminds me a little bit of that funk you get on dry aged beef that. Kind of catches you off guard at first, meat. but then you realize like that's what beef's supposed to be. Right, right. <laughs> that's the condensed yeah. version. It's it's just exactly. you know more concentrated. So how long does it take to cook the armadillo eggs approximately? So these uh, first couple things here, these are relatively quick cooks. Uh, armadillo eggs were about two hours okay. in the pit. Um, you know the bacon that absorbs smoke quite a bit. Right. So a lot of the smoky oh, flavor you're getting off the armadillo egg is it's really with the bacon. bacon retained. You know, and then the that real robust, um, heavy flavor tends to come from the ground meat. Uh, right. Venison's got a yeah, very so unique flavor to yeah, it. It's, it it's delicious. And then the uh, stuff on the inside tends to be a little bit more fleeting in the type of uh, flavor it delivers, but you get that little snap from the jalapeno, mm -hmm. you get to taste it real quick, maybe leaves a little lingering heat there. But yeah, that cream sure. cheese just kind of rounds yeah, everything yeah. and yeah. pulls yeah. everything right. to, together. Yes, yeah, those are wonderful. Great little invention. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you hunt the uh, deer too? Uh, a buddy of mine did, but, okay. so it wasn't exactly store bought. This was fresh killed. Wow, killed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, one more. Yeah, one more. Yeah, that's still some Corvette. I know. We I can't. Know. We I can't know. repeat it, Scotch. No. I know. Okay. Is, I can't. I'm good. <laughs> we're, we're drinking it because we love it. Especially Corvette during the week we haven't reviewed yet. Well, I haven't reviewed it. I don't think I've tried Corvette Oh, oh, you're in for a treat. Uh, this I'll, is an experience. I'll, right. I'll take one for the team when we do the review on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. This stuff's an experience. This is my, of all the Arbeg Core line, Arb Corbeck is by far my favorite. Yeah? Oh, what I love it? this thing. It's like 114, something like that. It's high up there. It's it's a beautiful whiskey. Yeah, let's see. What is this sucker coming at? Yeah, 57.1. Nice. 114.1. That's oh, yeah. First time I had this stuff, opened the bottle, and I oh. could have sworn that they took a piece of smoldering mesquite and just dropped it in Drop the bottle, bottle before, <laughs> before they mm. put the cork on it. They probably do. You never know. Wow. You need a little bit more meat there, Matt. Mm -hmm. mm. Our bag's got all the meat you need. <laughs> yeah. Right there in the glass. All it was a bite of the pepper. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Wow. I'm just going to finish that with And we're right here. Oh, that's really good. I got okay, high can. expectations for this. Yeah. The... Mm. Jesus. That makes it meaty. Like that's meaty. That bacon in there. Yeah. That's us like eating, drinking, eating meat. Mmm, that's tasty. Mmm. Oh. Oh. Mm. We have a winner. Yep. I need more meat. 
just that good. There you go. Yeah, that's great. That. Because I need more meat because it's our bag. Yeah. You gotta eat more meat. This is so good. Gotta get try some of this. Get some of this deer in here. Mmm. Oh yeah. So I think my favorites to pair up with this, and for different reasons, is the Arbeg and then the Westland. The Westland. That's my favorite too. So you got a real big, bold, mm. smoky, oh. peaty flavor, or you got that nice, calming, okay. sweet. The Arbeg after the bite. So I did. I did all three. I did an Arbeg before the bite, an Arbeg while the bite was in my mouth, and then a sip of Arbeg after. I kind of did that with all of them. The Ardbeg after the bite is almost maybe the best thing I've ever had. That mm -hmm. was absolutely incredible because all of the lingering mm -hmm. flavors of the meat and all of the smoke and all of the intensity from all those yep. flavors of the meat are still in my mouth, still kind of on my palate. And then that liquid just mm -hmm. made all of them better and then added so much to it. That mm -hmm. was yay, yay. <laughs> yay, Ardbeg. <laughs> the cult of Ardbeg just spoke. Indeed. Apparently so. I'm just going to take your word for it. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's so good with the art bag. It just amplifies the meat and just makes it... It really does. Oh, it just makes it so meaty. It does. That mm. is so, so yummy. So, conclusion, Arbel Eggs and Arbel Corbeck and very good. <laughs> <laughs> that, really, really going out of a limb there, man. Right. Yeah, really <laughs> difficult. You know, surprise. No, right. I like surprise. Pete. Surprise. And mm. me. It's Pete and me. Pizza Two meat. things you can't go can't go wrong with. I love meat. You're right though, meat. Matt, uh, with a combination with the barbecue. It's mm, that's glorious. Ah, oh, man, that's good. Yeah, the other ones were really nice. You got some different notes, but this is just the perfect meaty texture too. It's just it just really goes well together. So conclusion: heated whiskey, awesome with meat. Yep. Yeah. It's really interesting if you get a little of that jalapeno in there to add a little spiciness. It really mm -hmm. wakes up your palate. It's ready to take on some bold, and then you get every stitch of peat smoke out of it. I need more our because <laughs> it's our bag and it's really good. It's my favorite our bag, so <laughs> it's tasty. Mm. Yeah, so I think this and the West will be the clear winners with our mm -hmm. I think so too. I, I think the bourbons are really nice and they're really sweet, and the rye gave it a really nice dill note. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as far as accentuating your meat, those two really, two different directions, but really accentuate them. And I suggest really do pour it both with your meal. Half of, the, half of it and the other half of the other and just seeing which yep. one you like better. But I think, yeah, definitely with barbecue, those are the two clear winners yeah. for sure. You have to like this Pete. One. You have to like Pete. But, yeah. but if we don't like Pete, the sherry wood oh, the doesn't sherry have it. Yes. Most of the am root was really good, it doesn't have the Pete. That was close, yeah. That was, those yeah, would be the two I would definitely pick. But you know what? No, the Yamazaki. Yeah, it was, was really good there too. too. It was buttery, yeah. yeah. Very surprising. Very buttery, buttery smooth. But if you want something really sweet, the Old Forester is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. If you like it really sweet with your, uh, with your meat, the Old Forester was perfect with it. And yeah. if you like your pickles with your barbecue, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And the, the nice rye, rye yeah. could be just your, just your ticket. Mm -hmm. yeah, if I had to guess, you know, before we tried this, it was the Old Forester and the um, Mictor's Rye, mm -hmm. which I thought was going to be the right pairings. And then I was really shocked when we started going towards single malts, and that's oh, yeah. really where it came out. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad that American single malt did so well against this. It's just really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the one been around for, I don't know if it's been around for 10 years or not yet. I don't think. I don't think so either. But if so, just that 10 to yeah. 12. I gotta go turn the camera off for a second. All right. Meat. Meat. Give me meat. So much meat.